Okay, if, if y'all wouldn't mind, just for a second, if everyone could be really, really quiet. Everyone? Quiet, please, just for a second. Just got to make sure that the microphone's not picking up. Okay, that looks all right. I was having trouble finding a radio frequency to work with, so. All right, um, I got a new microphone, so I hope this doesn't turn out to be a complete disaster today. Um, hopefully it doesn't come out too loud or too quiet on the video, we'll see. Everybody is handed in their uh, take home. Anyone else? Last call, remember it's due at the beginning of class. Not five minutes, 10 minutes later. How did that second one go compared to the first one? Did y'all feel a little more comfortable with it? I was, I was, over the weekend, I was like, well, you know, if they're turning in a mini exam, then that means it must be time for the next one. And I was like, all right, are they ready to do the next one? I looked at it, and uh, you can actually do everything on this before I even start today's material. So this is uh, up through, this is going to finish off chapter 10. So this is up through, uh, actually, the concepts on this one are just 10, 7, and 10, 8. So it's four problems. That's it. It's due a week from today. I've posted this online already in both the PDF and CDF format. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead. There you all go. Thank you. Are you ready to go? I'm not going to go over the solutions for that second mini exam. We're just going to get right into today, to today's material. Um, we left off last time. We had just, just barely got our feet into chapter 11, right? And we were talking about 11.1, which was functions of several variables. And we realized that if you have three variables in an equation and you can solve for z, then you can always write z as some function of x and y, right? So z can be looked at as some function of two variables, x and y. And if you are to do this, it will draw what in three-dimensional space? A surface, right? This is going to draw you a surface. Curious to know how you feel about this. Do you think we could, uh, we could do something like this? Or something like this. Uh, yeah? All of these have something in common. Two inputs, one output. Two inputs, one output. If you look at z equals f of x, y, the domain is the ground, right? The x, y plane, and well, some part of it. And it graphs these points that come up and become this surface that's kind of waving around above the ground, yeah? If you do it this way instead, then you're still going to get a surface, but now your ground is actually the yz plane, which is, means it's kind of like a wall, right? In the room, it's kind of like one of the walls. And then your surface is coming out this way, and your, your, your sheet is actually like that instead of like this. Does that make sense? Sideways? And then if you do something like this, um, oops, sorry, this should be what? Y. Um, then your y coordinate is a function of x and z. And again, the xz plane would be your domain, and then the, the, x, uh, the y coordinate would come out and give you your surface. So this is a traditional surface sideways, and then this one sideways again, right? Make sense? That's going to come into play later on, all right? All right, so we, we are going to start today by talking about a surface here, f of x equals x natural log of 
y squared minus x. And we want to try and determine, first of all, the function's value at a point, 3, 2. Then determine the domain and sketch the domain in two-dimensional space. And then determine the range of the function. OK? So let's, let's start with part A. We are going to find f of 3, 2. Before I forget, um, not only am I doing the microphone a little different now, I am also um, going to record at uh, 1080p instead of 720p, which means that it's going to be four files when you go to look at it. So today, later on today, it'll be four files on YouTube if you are going to look at it. And then what I'll do is I'll come in later and I can use YouTube to compress them down to one file, but that usually will take about a day to happen. So initially, it'll be four files. Within a day, it'll be one, one video, all right? Just FYI. Um, so all we do here is just replace x with 3 and y with 2, right? So x is 3, we get 3, natural log, y squared is 4, take away 3. And what does that give you right there? 0, right? Because natural log of 1 is 0. So this gives you 0. Now, there are certain things we cannot plug in, right? Someone give me an example of an ordered pair that I could not plug into this function. 3, negative 2. 3. 3. 4, 2. 4, 2. Yeah, 4, 2 wouldn't work. I'm at 3, 0. What would that give you? 3 natural log of what's y? 0? So 0 take away 3. That would give you natural log of a negative number, which you can't do. Right? So there are certain points that, that are OK, certain points that aren't. So we're trying to find in this problem the domain for part b, which is give me a graphical representation of all of the points that are allowed. Right? So what are the things we have to concern ourselves with for part b? What are the things that would cause us a problem when you look at that function? Yeah, the natural log function cannot handle 0, can't handle negative numbers. So we need the thing inside of the natural log function, which we call the what? The thing inside of a function is called the argument. You all remember hearing that before? The argument of a function is the thing that's being plugged in, the, what's being evaluated. So what I, need, what I need for part b is that the argument of the natural log function not be 0 and not be negative, which means it needs to be greater than 0, strictly greater than, right? Then I'm guaranteed that the points will work. So all points that satisfy this quadratic inequality would be representative of my domain. Questions? I need that to be true, right? Now, if I were to come in here and say, all right, well, I don't like inequalities. Let me first just switch this over to an equation. Then I hope that we could all sketch that, right? That's a parabola. But it's, uh, it doesn't open up, right? It opens sideways. So it's going to look like this. And it would go like this, wouldn't it? No, I'm going to draw it for right now. This is uh, y squared equals x. Now, am I actually allowed to pick points on this parabola? Like, if I pick a point on this parabola, am I allowed to plug that point into my function? Well, this is equality, isn't it? If you're on this parabola, you have this e equation. What do I want? I want this, inequality, right? I don't want them to be equal. So points that satisfy this, I don't want, do I? So I don't want to draw this solid. I want to draw it dashed. Understand? We don't want to include all the points. So it's a dotted parabola. And then the question is, which side of the parabola are all your other points in your domain? The stuff over here or the stuff out on the outside? And how do we normally uh, go about determining that? Just test a point, right? Just pick a point that lives in one of the regions and test it. So a good point would be something like, uh, What's the point here? 3, 0? Does that live over here? Test that point. Oh, we did. Does that point work? No, it's undefined. 
So anything in this region shouldn't work. You could go and keep checking others. Now, a point that did work was 3, 2, right? And that point, 3, 2, can't tell, but it's outside of here. So what I know is that my domain should be on this side of the parabola. Make sense? Are there any questions? I've, I've graphed it in two-dimensional space. That is the domain of the function, vi visually. But then students will ask, well, how do you write that not visually, right? Like, how would you actually represent that set of, of points uh, without the picture? Well, here's how you'd write it. C call this set builder notation. You could say the set of all x's and y's, so all ordered pairs. Then we use a bar to say such that. So we're saying, hey, what's the domain? Well, it's all the ordered pairs such that y squared is greater than x. Done. That's it. That's the set notation of this shaded set. Everyone does understand if this, if the problem, if this had been equals, that would not be dotted, right? Okay. What about the range, part C? The range is a little more involved, because the range is the output, isn't it? What comes out of that function? What do you think? What comes out? Do you all understand why it's harder to do? Pardon me? This is the z, right? What we're trying to figure out is, is there, is there some Restriction on z, like this only spits out positive answers. Or it only spits out answers between 1 and 5, or something like that. So let's, let's look at it. Do you see any possible issues? Could, could we get positives to come out? Yes. Well, if uh, x is a positive number, that should be positive. We know the natural log spits out both positive and negative numbers, right? Think about your natural log function. Looks like this, doesn't it? That's what natural log looks like? That's natural log of x. So the natural log spits out positive numbers and it spits out negative numbers, right? The question is, to get everything out, negative infinity to infinity, can you make this right here all values between 0 and infinity, not including 0? What do you think? Let me just fix x to be 1. Okay, if x is 1, then what does that function up there turn into? f of 1y equals natural log of y squared minus 1. Do you all agree? Yeah? Still there? Yes? That's the way that would look. So this is now a function of just one variable, right? y? Can you get y, could you get y to be 0? Uh, let me ask you that. Could you actually get the input of this function to be 0? You're not allowed to do it, but could you do it? Could I let y be something that would make that 0? If y was 1, right? Okay, so if I, like, if I pick a y that's just a little bit bigger than 1, this number will be a little bit bigger than 0, right? So I can, I can create an input that's a little bit bigger than 0, which means it'll spit out a huge negative number, won't it? Can I keep on doing that and keep on plugging in things for y that are going to get me all these positive numbers? Yes? Right? Another way to look at it is what does y squared minus 1 look like? Well, it's a parabola, right? What's the lowest value on this parabola? Negative 1, right? Negative 1 all the way up to infinity. So I know that I can get any number in here between negative 1 and infinity. And the natural log function from 0 to infinity draws the whole thing. Are you all following me? What's the range of this function? Maybe you all aren't getting it. I'm hearing 0 to infinity, 1 to infinity. Negative infinity to infinity, yes. Look, 
don't look at this as natural log of x, okay? Just look at this as the natural log function. This is the input, right? This is the output. If I have a natural log function, you plug a positive number in, it's going to spit something out, yes? This right here is a natural log function. This input, you just told me this input, no matter what va values of y I pick, this input here has to be between negative 1 to infinity, right? I can make this anything between negative 1 and infinity. So the input of a natural log function that you have here can be anything between negative 1 and infinity, but any natural log function to draw the whole thing has to just go from 0 to infinity, yes? So you're going to be able to do that, right? You'll be able to produce every positive number, which means it'll pre uh, create every possible outcome from the natural log function, which dives down to negative infinity and goes up to infinity. So the range is... You could say all real numbers, you could say negative infinity to infinity. The range is a harder, a harder question to answer. Well, this graph tells you that, but the question, this is the thing I think that people are getting hung up on. Yes, of course, this graph, the range of this graph is negative infinity to infinity. But the question is, can you create every input? Does this create every input? y squared minus 1. Can, so let me show you an example. If I change this to plus 1, is it going to create everything? Can you, can you make, can you get 1 half out of this? Can you plug in a y and have it spit out 1 half? No. The smallest this is going to be is what? 1, right? So you're not going to be able to get 1 half out. The smallest we just said will be 1, right? So the smallest input you're going to have is 1. Anything bigger than 1 you'll be able to plug in, so you're going to get this part. If that were the problem, if it were, which it's not, then the range would actually be from 0 to infinity. 0 to infinity. It's subtle. I hope y'all are catching it. All right. Where's my little spray bottle? Let me go grab that. <clears throat> Shall we look at it? Here's the actual function. It's a surface, right? I'll move it around so we can see it a little better. It's got this weird thing happening. Do you all see that weird sort of, like someone came and tore it? Someone came and tore our, our sheet right in here. It's real jaggedy. You see that? That's actually the computer freaking out. Okay? The computer doesn't know what to do there. What's happening is you're getting an asymptote. Just like the natural log function dives down to negative infinity, like you can't keep drawing forever, right? So this is the, this is the computer trying to draw the surface. It's diving down to, to negative infinity, and it's having a hard time dealing with it. So at some point, it just gives up, starts cutting the, the picture off, and you get these jagged edges on it. All right? So if I look at it from the side, do you see how we're we're diving down, right? These look like logs, don't they? Each of these look like log functions. That's like a log function. And right behind there's another one, another log function. So if I hold my x value constant, like I did, right? I held x at 1, and I had a log function. That's exactly what happens here. Um, if I look at it from the top, so I'm looking, I'm standing up above this, and I'm looking down. It's pretty obvious you know, with our domain, isn't it? We can see the domain clearly. What about this one? <clears throat> okay, let's see if we can let me make sure I plug that in. I'm all paranoid because on Friday you'll see if you watch the homework solutions for uh, one of these sections. I had my new microphone. I was all happy about it. I did the whole video of the homework solutions. I forgot to plug the little 3.5 millimeter jack into the camera. So the audio is the audio from the camera and it sucks and I was all pissed off, man. But, all right. What do you think? You do this one. Work on it. See if you can, uh, all I ask is for the domain.
Anybody want to tell me what the inequality is that I'm going to need to work with here? What do I need in order for this function to be defined? 9 minus x squared minus y squared, minus y squared. Greater than or equal. So this time it's okay to be equal, right? Because you can take the square root of zero. So that's what I'm working with. This again is a nonlinear inequality. Right? It's non nonlinear. How in the world am I going to figure out what that looks like? Well, I like to go back again and go to the whole idea, the whole notion of we don't like inequalities, but equalities we're more comfortable with. So change this into an equality. This would be nine minus x squared minus y squared equals zero, right? Anybody want to tell me what that is? It's a circle. Radius three. All right, if we just move things around. All right, that's a circle of radius three. That's what it would be if it was equality, which we actually do have equality, right? So I'm going to draw myself a circle of radius 3. And I'm going to not make it dashed, right? It's going to be solid. That's supposed to be 3. Oops. OK, that's my radius of 3 right there. The question is, is it the inside or the outside? So how can you check? Just test a point, 0, 0, right? Let's just test 0, 0 and check it into the original inequality. Is it true? Is 9 minus 0 squared minus 0 squared greater than 0? Yes. So it's everything inside, isn't it, since it worked? So when I draw this thing, right, when I graph this function, it should only exist above this circle, right? Outside that circle, there's no picture. You could also have taken this and, and worked with it as, a, as an inequality and recognized again that this is almost like the equation of a circle, right? But you, this is the biggest radius you can have, right? Um, if these two squared together added up is less than or equal to 9, then it definitely would be less than or equal to 8, then 7, then 6, then 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You basically get all circles going down to 0. Understand? If you flip this inequality, what would it do? It would be outside the circle, right? OK. All right. All right, what about the range? This range is a little easier than the last one. Negative what? Negative 3 to 3? Is it possible to get negative 3 out of that function? When you take the square root of a number, can it ever be negative? No, no not unless we're doing imaginary numbers, which we're not, right? So anytime you take the square root of a number, the smallest number you can ever get out would be what? Zero, right? And then in this case, what would the biggest number you could get out be? Three. And that's because the largest that the, that the uh, argument could ever be, we also call this the radicand, the largest that this number could ever be would be nine. Why? That's the only way we'll get it to work. Yeah, but why do you know that this can't ever become 10 or 20? Because you're subtracting a number, right? Good. That is what? X squared is always a positive number. Y squared is always positive. So when you subtract a positive, it gets smaller, right? Nine is going to get smaller. If you subtract y squared again, it's going to get smaller. Now, you could have the situation where both x and y are 0, couldn't you? In that case, you would have 9 up there, right? If x and y are 0, you get 9. Yeah? So think about this. Above this, right, the biggest point you could get out, you just said, was 3. And it happened where? At the origin. So imagine coming out 3 units. 1, 2, 3. I've got a point. Now, what about right here, if I plug in this point? That's the point 3, 0. What would come out? What would happen if you plug in 3, 0? You get 0. What if I plug in this point? 0. This one. This one. What do you think is going to happen at any point along here? 
you're going to get zero. So you've got the highest points here, all the edges are zero. You see what it looks like, right? You're showing me on the... There it is. All right? It's basically the upper hemisphere, isn't it? It's a surface. It's a top part of a sphere. I didn't answer the range. The range was what? Zero to three. Questions? Now, that's when we have a function of two variables, right? Function of two variables, the input lives where? Function of two variables, input lives in R2, output is just a number, right? Yes? Yeah. If we were to state the domain of that one, uh, the circle, uh -huh. would, would we write it as the inequality 9 minus x squared minus y squared greater than or equal to 0? Or you can move things around either way. But that's, correct. that's correct, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. So we have input two-dimensional space, output is one number, right? But there's nothing stopping us from going to a new function, f of x, y, z, where you have three inputs in a single output. But now we're starting to run out of letters, aren't we? Like, in, you know, we just, we just had just a second, z, a second ago, z is f of x, y. But now I'm going to say, hey, look, my function's actually going to have x, y, and z. And so what do I call that, you know? I'm out, like I ran out, z, right? So now you can start to use anything you want, right? I'll, I'll just, what? Huh? W. w, OK, I like w. There we go, w. So now you have, what this would require is an equation with four variables in it where you could solve for one of them in terms of the other three. If you're able to do that, if you're able to do that, you should get a, uh-oh, what would you get here? Well, you, you have three dimensions, right? three dimensions for the input, one dimension for the output. Can you visualize the domain? Will, will we be able to visualize the domain? Yes, it'll live in three-dimensional space. But the range, the output, we can't put it together in the picture, can we? Because that would require a fourth dimension, right? which means we can't visualize these, all right? Sometimes we call these hypersurfaces because it's like a fourth dimensional surface, but uh, you can't see it. We can't, can't actually show it to you. Understand? What we did just before this, we could see the domain and the range together in one picture. Not anymore for this, but we can still ask about domains. If I have a function of three variables, we can still very, very easily discuss domain. So let's do that. Here is a function of three variables. f of x, y, z equals square root. Very similar to what we just had, right? That's, I don't know why this says a, a, b. It should be a, b, c. Was it a, b, b a while back too? Yeah. Eh, well, I never get around to updating these things. All right. What do you get when you plug in 1, 2, 0? 4? Anyone disagree? Oh, root 4. OK, root 4, which is 2. Is that OK? And then what? Part B, domain. Uh-oh. We have a square root again, right? We need to make sure that the, the argument or the radicand, right, is not zero, or not negative, sorry. So we need that 9 minus x squared minus y squared minus z squared stay bigger than or equal to zero. What is that? That's a sphere, right? If we make that an equation, if we were to convert that into an equality instead of an inequality, we could rewrite that as 9 equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's a sphere of radius 3, isn't it? But it's three-dimensional. So we've got this ball. 
right? Like that. We've got this three-dimensional ball. And right now what we're saying is that the radius of this is three, yeah? So that outside edge is this equation, just the outside surface. Are we allowed to plug in other points that are inside or outside of this? So will a point on the inside of this, this uh, ball work? Well, what did we do before? We checked, didn't we? We tested. So why don't we test a point? Why don't we test the origin? Zero, zero, zero. Does that work? So you come over here, you plug it into this. Does zero, zero work? Yes, it does, which means you include the origin. So it's everything inside that ball. So this is a truly, it's a solid ball, isn't it? As opposed to a, just a surface. So this is a solid ball radius 3. That's the domain, everyone. That's the domain. The range is nowhere to be seen, right? The range is nowhere on this picture, understand? Let me, give you, let me give you a quick example before we uh, say range. Well, I don't know. Range is pretty easy, isn't it? No? I, should, I need to quit saying that. It's easy, right? It's obvious. But it's very similar to the last problem, isn't it? What's the, what's the smallest that a square root can ever be? It would be 0. Can you make this 0? Let x be 3, let y be 0, let y be 0, z be 0, right? Then you'll have 0. So you, you know you can get 0 to come out. Um, the biggest that this thing could be is if it were just root 9, which you can do if it's 0, 0, 0. So you're going to get everything between 0 and 3 again. So the range of this is 0 to 3. What I was, getting, what I was going to say before I did that was, um, let me give you an example of a useful function of three variables. We live on Earth, right? Isn't, like if we want to get really, really precise about it, isn't the gravitational acceleration, even though we say gra gravitational acceleration is constant on Earth, it does vary, doesn't it? It varies really with where you are. You change altitudes. You know, the gravitational force does change. It fluctuates. So you could say, that the input is your x, y, and z on, on Earth, right? And the output is the actual gravitational force at that point. So the question would be, well, where are you allowed to talk about? Well, anywhere on Earth or inside of it, right? If you want to dig down three miles, the gravitational force is going to be different there. So your domain is, is this whole ball, right? The 